It's that time of the week yet again when we touch upon foreign media coverage of events here on the Korean Peninsula. As always, Kim Sung-hyun joins me now. Sung-hyun, welcome back. Great to see you again, Sunny. So today we have international coverage on Korea's strategies against COVID-19. Uh, also reports on the latest comments by the North Korean leader's sister, Kim Yo-jong. A story about South Korea and the Quad security framework. And finally, about the Korean mobile game industry looking into a new market. So let's dive right in. CNN reported about Korea's recent case spikes, elaborating that the surge is not only due to the highly contagious Omicron variant, but a symptom of living with COVID-19. The report explained that nearly half of the world's new cases are from Asia, with Korea and Vietnam at the lead. It cited an expert who said that Korea has a large testing capacity, which could explain why more cases are being found compared to other nations. Meanwhile, CNN highlighted that even with soaring cases in Korea, vaccines are the reason why authorities don't seem too rattled. Moreover, the death toll in Korea remains relatively low. The report added not only does Korea have a high vaccination rate overall, the elderly are especially well protected, which is crucial as they are the most vulnerable to severe illnesses and death. Yes, they are. Meanwhile, Song what has been the international media response to Kim Yo Jong's latest remarks directed at South Korea? Yes, Sunny, so quite a few of the major international outlets uh, have looked into her latest comments uh, dedicated, uh, directed at South Korea, which was softer in tone compared to her previous remarks that harshly criticized the South Korean defense minister's reference to a potential preemptive strike. So a report by Daily NK said that her second uh, statement criticizing South Korea probably probably was toned down due to criticism from within the reclusive state. Kim Yo-jong again criticized South Korean Defense Minister Ho's comments regarding preemptive strikes just two days after issuing an earlier statement, but using much softer words, which the article suggests is a move aimed at soothing an upset North Korean public. An expert was cited as saying that North Koreans seem to be fatigued by the regime's attempts to create a confrontational atmosphere with South Korea. And another source of Daily NK added that many North Koreans had reacted negatively to Kim's previous statement issued on Sunday, especially amid their growing discontent due to North Korea's economic struggles brought on by the pandemic and border closures. Moving forward, Song, and I understand some pundits see a place for South Korea within the Quad security framework. Tell us about that. Yes, yeah, Sunny. So I did come across a report by the National Interest uh, titled Why South Korea's Place is in the Quad, which indicates that the Biden administration could benefit from recruiting more Quad members, particularly in order to keep China in check. The report by National Interest talks about how uh, South Korean President-elect Yoon song yeol will be a plus to the Biden administration's strategy against China. The paper says with Yoon coming into power, the Biden administration has a great chance to bring operational context to its unclear vision for the Indo-Pacific region and form a united American strategy against China. It further emphasizes that the Biden administration should invite Korea to join the Quad as Korea's participation will provide a win-win cooperation scenario for all of the Quad nations as well as the region. It also suggests that the war in Ukraine was a wake-up call and that many Asian countries are wary of the possibility that Chinese President Xi Jinping could perhaps ignite similar chaos in its own neighborhood. And finally, in the gaming industry, Song and I understand Korean game developers are now focusing their sights on the Indian market. Right, uh, so it looks like Korean game developers are seeing a bright future in India now while slowly moving away from the Chinese market. The New Straits Times cited industry, industry officials who said the Indian market is being seen as an alternative to China's since China has banned most Korean games from entering its market. The focus of Korean game makers in the Indian market is on mobile games as they've been getting more and more popular with the growing use of smartphones in India along with the improving network environment. Among Korean companies, Crafton has shown great interest in the Indian market, with more and more people signing up for a mobile version of its first-person shooting game. NCSoft, meanwhile, has also been eyeing the Indian market in search of new opportunities, also making new investments in India to secure future technologies. I see. All right, Sangyan, as always, thank you very much for the coverage. Thank you for having me.